Pastor Mike Creed with Awake America. I just would like to take some time and explain. I've had questions about uh, the Eliot or the Indian Bible and why it's so important. I and my wife have been busy just over the last year, uh, just investigating and taking time to find the history of the Indian Bible. We've asked in museums about the Indian Bible and they would like to know about it. <laughs> uh, they know they have a copy of it, but they'd like to know about the history of it. Uh, we spent time in several places and in libraries and uh, reading and, and uh, it's almost as if it's a hidden history that is not taught. Uh, I never heard about it in, in school. I never heard about it in college. Uh, I, I know about the Pilgrims and I know about Plymouth and I know about the founding of our country, but I never heard about the Indian Bible, which is the first, the Eliot Indian Bible is the first Bible printed on American soil. A man named Edward Winslow, a pilgrim, stepped on this, the Plymouth Rock and began to settle. And his main goal was, the goal was to present the gospel to the Indian folks here in the Northeast. Uh, when he came. And as a result of that, uh, he created relationships and had a burning desire, but he could not give them any written language because they had no written language. Uh, he could not communicate the gospel. It was just uh, almost impossible, no written language, uh, a lot of phonetics. But yet we find that he eventually uh, came upon a man named John Eliot that had come a believer uh, and was a linguist from England, and he came. The two men joined together, uh, began to make relationships with Indians, found an Indian that had, had been taken hostage somewhere and, and learned the uh, English language. So he knew how to speak English, and then he knew how to speak the English, uh, Indian language, and they uh, got together and they began to create, and from the Geneva Bible, they put together the Eliot Indian Bible, Old Testament, New Testament. They began. They began with the Ten Commandments uh, to show men that they were sinners. Uh, they began with uh, Psalm 23 to show them the Lord is our shepherd. And, uh, and uh, uh, this work of love uh, from these two men uh, was taken across back to England and, uh, and they, they started uh, uh, organizations and, and raised money, took tracks, of, uh, tracks of, with Indians' testimonies on it. And eventually, uh, uh, a printing press was sent across, and the printing press was put in the basement of Harvard University, at where they, uh, they began to print the Word of God, Old and New Testament. And it's amazing. It's an amazing story of the grace of God and how the gospel can reach everyone. I was reading in uh, Eliot's story and uh, just some of his notes, and I'll just give you some little quotes. It says, little before we came to their wigwams, five or six of the chief men of them met us uh, with Engli uh, English salutations, bidding, bidding us much welcome, leading us into the principal wigwam of Walbon. And that's where they found a bunch of Indi Indians that were waiting to hear the gospel. They presented the gospel, not having it written at that time, and they presented the gospel, and uh, eventually... Walbon, uh, in his book, in, in pages 80 and 81, uh, in this first interview in uh, 1646, Walbon, uh, it will be re recollected, was the first Indian that embraced the gospel. And uh, we understand this. He heard the gospel. That Then he came and he said, I've got to know about the gospel. I have other uh, quotes here as I was reading uh, uh, in, uh, about this situation in the memoirs of the life of character of Reverend John Eliot. One Indian asked, how can we come to know Jesus Christ? We answered that if they were able to read our Bible, the book of God therein, they would see clearly Jesus, who Jesus Christ was. But since they could not read the book, we wish them to meditate on what they had heard out of God's book and to do much and often, uh, both when they laid down on their mats and in their wigwams, they rose up and went alone into the field. And many of them, uh, receive Christ as personal Savior as the gospel was preached to them. And a lot of people say, what is the significance of this Bible? The significance is that the gospel uh, go, can go further than we ever think it could. 
and faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The Bible, uh, from the Bible, the creation of the Bible, we understand thousands of Indians got saved. They could not stay in their villages because of child sacrifice or uh, other issues, uh, uh, cannibalism and, and spiritism. So they moved, they created uh, 14 towns called Praying Indian Villages. There they had a church and a school and, and they moved out there. Be, we're new creatures in Christ when we get saved. Old things are passed away and that began to happen. And still today in New England, you can find these villages there. And you say, Pastor, what significance is the Bible? I'll tell you what, it's only through the Word of God that we hear the message of Christ and folks get saved. And that's exactly what happened in the very beginning days of our nation. I hope you'll pray for this project and, and uh, learn more about it. God bless you.